Okay, so let's talk about this issue where we want to take one carbonyl component uh, and, and use it as the electrophile and then take another and, and use it as the nucleophile to get this type of aldol product, uh, where, which we would call a mixed aldol, where the two components were not the same. So this is an extremely important uh, thing to, to be able to do uh, to make complex molecules. Um, a lot of molecules are going to involve this, this uh, structure or derivatives of that. Um, but we've got quite a problem here now, because if we're going to simply uh, toss in these two components with base and, and just sort of hope for the best, um, it's probably not going to work out that well, um, except in some specific cases. So let, let me give you an example of, of what the problem would be. So again, we'll just take a very simple example. Let's say we have acid aldehyde that we wanted to um, serve as the electrophile, and then we uh, want to use propion aldehyde as the nucleophile. Okay, so if I toss these together with some sodium hydroxide, uh, what I'm hoping to get out of this would be this aldol product. Okay, that's my hope. Um, but of course, that's not going to be the only thing that happens because if I enolize, uh, enolize propion aldehyde, um, that could add to acid aldehyde or it could just add to another equivalent of propion aldehyde. So I would almost certainly or I would certainly get some of this product as well. So that's the propion aldehyde dimer. So this is what I want, but I'm also going to get this, and there's really not much of a selectivity there uh, between the two. But of course, that's not the only problem. Uh, acid aldehyde could just as easily be enolized as propion aldehyde. So I'm going to get some acid aldehyde enolate that's going to add to unenolized acid aldehyde. So I will absolutely get some of the acid aldehyde dimer, but of course then the acid aldehyde enolate could add to propion aldehyde. So of course I should also expect to get some of this product. Okay, so where acid aldehyde is added to propion aldehyde. So I got at least four uh, different products um, and they're basically all going to be formed in equal amounts, more or less. I mean that some some structural things could shift that that balance a little bit, but it would, it's not going to be useful. Okay, so this is what we would call a disaster in synthetic chemistry. We need something. Uh, we need strategies that are going to allow us to get a single product, um, or at least something as the very much major product. Okay, so what are we going to do? Well, there are some classes that are useful and and that will not suffer from this problem. So we can we should certainly talk about those. So. One, one strategy, okay, if we can just limit, if we can choose partners that, that can't serve both functions, meaning they, they can't both be analyzed and they can't both be electrophiles, but only one is going to be uh, each one of those, those obviously can, uh, can work, right? So remember that we just talked about that for aldols, ketones, um, as electrophiles don't give stable aldol products. If you use a ketone as an electrophile, the aldol product can form, but it's going to favor the starting materials. So practically speaking, ketones can't be the electrophile. Okay, so ketones can't be the electrophile. Okay, so that's good. And then um, in terms of the, the, uh, the nucleophile, we could use aldehydes then um, that are uh, that are non enolizable okay and so what that means is that there's no proton in the alpha position that can be deprotonated and therefore those aldehydes can't be nucleophilic okay uh, so if we actually combine these two, a ketone and then a non-enolizable aldehyde, well, those aldols are going to work great because each component can only serve one role. So let's just see a, just a few examples of this. Okay. So, all right, so ketone, it could be anything because none, no ketone is going to serve as a viable electrophile. 
um, for the aldol product. Um, only if you go to the condensation it would be. So acetone would be a great one. And then we just need a non-enolizable aldehyde. Okay, something without an alpha proton to the carbonyl. So benzaldehyde here, right? This aromatic aldehyde, there's no alpha proton. So it just, it can't enolize. There's, there's no way it can enolize. So this can only serve as the electrophile. This can only be the nucleophile. So this aldol reaction is gonna work brilliantly, right? It's gonna be great. Okay, so there we go. That's the only product that can form um, from this reaction. Okay, so, so that's gonna be a great reaction. Here's another one. Um, again, you know, we could just pick any, any ketone that can enolize, that's fine, um, because those aren't gonna be the electrophile. Um, we could also have, instead of an aromatic aldehyde though, we could have one that's completely substituted in the alpha position. Okay, so this, this fully substituted aldehyde, it's called pivaldehyde. Um, and if you were to uh, treat this with, um, let's just say an alkoxide base, just to make things a little different here, um, again, only one thing can enolize and only one thing can be the uh, electrophile. So in this case, we would expect that again to be the only product, okay? So these are a set of aldol reactions that are certainly possible and they certainly um, uh, have their, their place. Um, but still, what if our substrates that, you know, the aldol product that we need doesn't come from substrates that fit this um, sort of strategy? Well, there's another possibility and I'll just briefly mention this. Um, this one, again, it, it has its limitations, but, um, but it, it can also be useful or, you know, it's something to think about. Um, so what we're going to do in this case is to use a non-enolizable aldehyde, um, but then we can also use an enolizable aldehyde as long as we run the reaction in the right way. Okay, so we're going to use a non-enolizable aldehyde. Okay, so let's just give you an example. We've got, uh, let's say, benzaldehyde. That's our non-enolizable aldehyde. Let's say we just really, really needed the product in which acetaldehyde was going to be the nucleophile. Okay, uh, this is a problem, again, because we, we might get, or we would get some of this product, which is the one we want, but of course, we're also gonna get a whole mess of the acetaldehyde dimer. So what could we do? So here's what, here's what you could do, and this is a mechanical solution to this selectivity problem. You put all of the benzaldehyde in the flask, and then what you do, and you have your base in there as well, and then you slowly drip in the acetaldehyde, just drip by drip, and there's, there's little mechanical devices that will do that for you. And if you think about it, uh, each drop of the acetaldehyde goes in and sees an absolute ocean of uh, benzaldehyde, right? So the concentration of the acetaldehyde is really, really low. And what that means is that anytime the acetaldehyde enolizes, the only electrophile it's going to see um, for all intents and purposes is going to be benzaldehyde, okay? Just, just because of concentration, there's way more benzaldehyde uh, and that's just gonna be a much more likely reaction than an enolized acetaldehyde finding another molecule of acetaldehyde. The concentration is just too low. And so by slowly dripping in this component here, you can actually get a pretty good reaction to go here. Um, again, as, you know, as long as your reaction, uh, your aldol reaction is outpacing the rate of your dripping in the acetaldehyde. And of course you have to make sure that the, that the rate of the reverse reaction isn't just regenerating acetaldehyde. So if you let this go too long, it's probably going to uh, give you that mixture. Okay, so that's a mechanical possibility and chemists use that type of strategy um, a fair bit. But even still, this, this just all seems a little bit, um, you know, uh, heavy handed. And uh, what we'd really like to do is have a strategy where we can, you know, decide that one component is going to be the nucleophile and one is going to be the electrophile and let that be the end of it. And so for what I will call modern aldol reactions, 
modern L dolls. Um, what we're going to do is to use a strong base like LDA. Okay, so we're going to take uh, our our ketone or ester or whatever we want to be the enolate. We're going to use LDA um, again, usually at low temperatures, to form our lithium enolate. Okay, and now remember this is a stoichiometric deprotonation. We have a hundred percent formed the enolate of this component. And then once this is formed, uh, and only then, then we throw in the, um, the uh, electrophile. So let's just say we have, we have this aldehyde, right? So this is, this is technically enolizable, um, but since we have already used up our base, uh, we can now throw it into this ketone. And once we do that, and after we work this up with proton, we can get to this mixed aldol. Um, but the key here is that this is a very uh, selective in terms of what is the enolate and what is the electrophile, okay? So this is also not gonna be reversible under these con conditions. Okay, you could certainly get this to reverse if you then threw some more base at it, but, but here um, we're doing it under conditions where it's gonna go and then it's gonna stick, okay? And then you work it up and then, then it'll be stable. Okay. And the other thing I would just like to, to point out here um, is that we can utilize this, um, this regio selectivity um, to get selective aldol reactions. So let me just give a quick example. So if we have you know, cyclopentanone with a methyl group on one side, um, remember that we can um, do the selective enolization. Uh, so if we do the kinetic enolization where we've got you know, a slight excess of the LDA. Uh, we can get to the kinetic enolate, right at the least hindered side, and then if we throw in our electrophilic carbonyl, um, what we're going to get out is the aldol reaction at that site. Okay, so that's going to be the only the only isomer that we get. Okay, so even though we, you know, we had the potential to form aldol products at either side, um, here we can just absolutely, uh, you know, decide which side we're going to, to do the aldol reaction at, right? Now the final thing I'm just going to say in this video is that remember that LDA is not compatible with aldehydes, okay? Uh, remember that, that LDA will actually add to the carbonyl and take it out of commission. Uh, so you're not going to be able to use LDA to do aldehyde dimerizations. Um, and doing uh, mixed aldehyde aldols um, was, uh, yeah, well, at least it used to be one of the uh, most challenging uh, things to think about uh, in organic chemistry. Subsequently been mostly solved um, in the last, say, 15 years, and we might have time to talk about that in lecture. but. Uh, for the most part here, um, doing, doing ketones, esters, aldehydes, those types of mixed aldols are going to be very, um, very uh, uh, plausible here uh, using LDA as the uh, strong base. So let me just uh, finish off this video then by mentioning the, the synthetic utility of the aldol reaction. Uh, Okay, so if we get to our aldol product here, and this could be of, of you know, a lot of different uh, variety in terms of its structure. Uh, so let's do, let's do it that way. Okay, so first off, um, if you notice, we're actually generating two chiral centers here. So we get a stereocenter there if there's a substituent, and we also get a stereocenter uh, at the, the position that we added to to get that hydroxyl group. So, so that's really great. We've also created a CC bond. Um, so um, just in terms of complexity building, the aldol is fantastic. So two stereocenters and a CC bond, very, very useful. Um, some simple derivatizations of, of these products though um, get us to even more complexity. So we could, for example, reduce the carbonyl. So if it's a ketone or aldehyde, um, we can reduce that with sodium borohydride. Obviously, if it was an ester, 
we would need diabol or, or lithium aluminum hydride. But at any rate, you can reduce and then what you will get out is a 1,3 diol. Right, so an aldol reduction gives you a 1,3 diol. Um, you can do um, something similar. You could do, uh, you could protect that hydroxyl group. So let's protect with CMS chloride. And then we could do a Wittig reaction. So let's just do a simple um, methylene Wittig, just a one carbon there. Um, that would get us to OTMS. And we would just have formed a double bond there. Uh, okay. So, so we just, we'd convert that, the carbonyl of the aldol product into a, a, a double bond, right? And now we've got this sort of uh, situation set up. Um, and then alternatively, we could do the aldol um, condensation where we eliminate the water. We get to the alpha beta unsaturated carbonyl. Um, and then, you know, as we said before, we could do the, the Gilman reagent. So we could do that conjugate addition, okay? All right, so now we've got this whole complexity built up. Um, or we could just do something like just let's just hydro uh, let's just hydrogenate uh, that alkene. And we get to this saturated ketone. Okay. And there are many, many more possibilities. We can start to branch off in, in absolutely um, enormous ways here. Um, but this gives you just a little bit of a flavor of what the Eldol uh, product allows you to do synthetically. Okay, all right. Uh, so that's that's the nuts and bolts of the aldol reaction. Um, there's one final case that we want to talk about though, and that's just the slight variation here where we're actually going to do an aldol reaction um, where both components are in the same molecule. So that's going to be an intramolecular aldol reaction.